Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be painting and decorating this room just to freshen it up a little bit and there'll be loads of tips and tricks in the video so you can get professional looking results for yourselves. So a couple of the main things that you want to get right when you're doing painting and decorating. The first thing is preparation. So you want to make sure that you go around, fill any holes or any cracks or anything like that, um, sand it down, use primer where needed and give the walls a quick clean just so there's no grime on the surface or anything like that. And that's one of the most important things. Just make sure you get the preparation work done correct. Uh, another big thing is using good quality trade paint. Now, a lot of people will go out to retail shops and they'll go and buy the cheapest paint they can get their hands on. And unfortunately, when you do that, a lot of the times you end up needing three or four coats of paint just so you get the um, coverage on the walls. So I'll be showing you a few different trade paints that you can go out and purchase and you'll get a much better finish. And the last thing that's kind of important as well is you want to make sure you use a good quality roller and a good quality brush and this will make your life a lot easier and you'll get much better results as well. So generally speaking it's better avoiding the retail paint and going for the trade paint instead. So I'm just popping into Brewers here which is a painting and decorating shop. Um, staff are super friendly, always find them very helpful and they have the acrylic durable mat that I'm looking for which is the Johnson's one right there. And as you can see here, the selection of different colour options you've got to choose from is crazy. So you will find the colour that you're looking for. And the colour that I'm going to be going for today is this seriously sand colour. And brewers have a whole range of different machines from different manufacturers that will tint the paint to the exact specification that you want. So here I've got my acrylic durable mat. This is adding the tint to the base white colour. So there you can see the tint. And then the last machine just shakes the paint so you get a nice uniform colour. So as I say, I think trade paints are the way to go. You're better off paying that little bit extra money and you'll get a far better finish. Um, but it's much better quality ingredients in the trade paints. I've got some of them on display right here. Um, you'll get far better coverage, so the paint will go further. The opacity levels are much better, so again, you'll probably only need one to two coats with trade paints as opposed to retail paints, um, and you'll just get a better depth of colour and a better finish. So some of the trade paints I've gone for, I've gone for the Anti-Reflex 2, so that's just going to do the ceilings and that will prevent any picture framing, any lines, anything like that. You'll get a nice uniform crisp finish for that paint. So we have that. Um, I've gone for the Johnson's Acrylic Durable Mat and I've had that tinted. So there's that one. And these are scrubbable as well. So they're very good in high traffic areas like a hallway or you know a bathroom or somewhere like that, kitchen. Um, these paints are ideal for those kind of scenarios. Um, I went to the crown shop and I've got this tinted as well and that's going to be a feature wall at the back there. And then I've got my quick gloss primer and the gloss itself and this is the fast flow quick dry gloss from crown. Um, I've had good results and good finish with it. And there are other good quality paints on the market. I quite like the Bedeck as well. That's another good one. Um, these are water based these ones so you can wash your brushes out no problem as well and it um, it doesn't yellow over time which is another advantage to having the water based stuff. Um, there are let's say other good quality paints on the market. This I've used um, just last week actually the cover mat obliterate by Crown so that's another good quality paint as well that you can use for the ceilings. And another part and thing to mention here is get yourself a good quality brush. So the one I've got is a Arrowworthy Classic and it's got a tapered head on there. So that just allows you to cut in a lot easier with the brush, two and a half inch brush. And uh, you just get a nice flow with it. You don't get any brush marks. So it's worth investing. I think this was seven or eight pound for a good quality brush. And it's the same with your rollers. You don't have to spend a fortune on these. Um, I think I spent four quid on these hammer, 
Hamilton Perfection rollers. This is a short pile one, you can get medium and long pile ones as well. And Rota also do really good rollers for very cheap to be honest. I think this one was like three quid and this one was four or five. So you don't have to spend a fortune to get good quality stuff. Now it's probably important I should say this, not all retail paints are bad. You have um, brands like Zinza that do do very good quality paint and you can buy that from places like B&Q, Screwfix. Um, so yeah, it is worth mentioning, not all retail paint is bad. You just need to know where to look. Another good quality paint that I was surprised with uh, is Good Home. So you can get this from B&Q and you can get these tinted to whatever colour you want. And actually in terms of opacity and coverage, it's very good and it's quite cheap as well. It's only, I think it was £25 for five litres. So it does offer a good value for money. So I just want to say that not all retail paint is bad. Um, you just have to be careful which ones you select. And so if we just nip into b and for a second, you can see the range of colours they've got on display here. Um, so you've got many, many different colours that you can choose from. And as I've just shown there, b and do do a wide range of different colours. One thing you can do if you do this professionally is get yourself a, this is sort of like a card folder. You put Pokemon cards and stuff like that in it. Um, but you can also put your colour tones in here so you can get a whole bunch from B&Q. And then you can offer the customer many different colour options. And then what you can do once they select a colour is then go to B&Q and they'll make it up to that exact specification. So the tint will be bang on. And like I say, it's only £25 a tub for the good home paints. And they do offer good value for money and um, good quality, to be fair. Okay, so the first thing to do here is just to go around the room and fill in any defects, cracks, dents in the wall, anything like that. Um, so if I just show you here, anything, I'm not sure if you can get that on camera, like there and there anything where there's any kind of defect. So if you look at the top of this window, it's not in the best of condition. So that needs filling all up there. And we've got some more over here as well. All the way along there actually, all needs doing. So that's the first thing, just go around the room and just make sure that you fill everything that needs filling. Okay, so I've mocked up a bit of filler here. And I'm just gonna go along and just fill in the defects. So the more time and care you take now with the filling and the sanding, the better results you'll end up with. So just make sure you go around and get everything you need to get. And then once it's dry, you can then just sand it down like I'm doing here. Okay, so everything's been sanded down, cleaned down the walls. Um, I've put a load of dust sheets down, obviously for when we start painting. Let's just take this off a second. Um, the curtain rails have all been taken down as well. Anything like accessories and stuff on the wall, just take everything down. I've taken the light picture down as well, just make your life easier and uh, we'll crack on with painting the room now. And the other thing that's worth mentioning is not all dust sheets are the same. So whereas you've got this cloth type one um, where paint can get through it much easier than say this one where you've got like the cloth on the top but then you've got like a plastic coating on the bottom so it's like double protected. So another thing to do is just shake the paint before opening the lid and then what I do is I just put mask and tape on the edges of the paint can and then uh, tuck in the uh, mask and tape so you've got like a tab and then I'll just use that to pour out the paint and that way the paint doesn't go all down the sides of the actual paint tin. And then what I do is just remove the masking tape and chuck it in the bin. And it just stops having paint spills all over your paint tub. So just begin cutting in with the white sealing paint here. 
and then I back roll it with the roller and then same method again and it's worth noting here you don't have to be particularly accurate with the brush at this point so it's absolutely fine getting some of the sealing paint on the walls because you're going to be painting the walls anyway and cutting it back in so don't be too fussy here just get the paint onto the edges of the ceiling and you're just going around the entire room cutting in the ceiling pretty simple really and by the way if you're wondering what this is this is a Worcester Pelican container so it's just really handy I've got a magnetic clip there which holds my brush in place and then I've got my roller that just hangs on the side so I can back roll everything so yeah just thought I'd give that one a quick mention as well Okay, so now I'm done with cutting in for the minute. You just want to make sure you keep your brushes fresh. So all you need to do is just get some aluminium foil paper, dip your brush in the paint, put a bit of paint on there. Pop it in the foil and then just scrunch it up. And that'll give you a nice airtight seal and that'll keep that brush fresh for days. And then just do the same with the roller as well. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I've got a short, medium and long pile roller. I think I'm going to go for the medium for the ceilings. So let's crack on with that next. Okay guys, we've got the ceiling paint. I've got my roller extension right here. And what we're going to be doing is we'll be starting in that corner and we'll be working from the window outwards. Um, so that's the idea and what I'll do is I'll just do it in sections so it'll be like block sections at a time and we'll just carry on working outwards until we complete the whole ceiling. So that's the plan. So yeah I'm just beginning in one corner here and just applying the paint. And this anti-reflex 2 paint is quite a forgiving paint so um, it's very hard to end up with lines in the ceiling and picture framing and things like that so it's one of the better paints to use for the ceiling it's a very flat dull matte type color so if there's any defects in the ceiling uh, it masks it very well as it doesn't reflect the light that much All right, so that's the ceiling done now. And um, next step is to start cutting in the walls. So I've got my acrylic durable mat. Um, I used a method as I did earlier on, so I've not got paint all over the tin. I'm using a Prodec Ice Fusion roller. They're good quality ones. And then I'm just gonna cut in with my two inch paintbrush. I do have a three inch one somewhere, but I've not got it tanned, so I'm just gonna use this one for cutting in. Right, so let's get cracked on with that then. Okay guys, so I just want to show you how you can cut in neatly and accurately. So I'm using my two inch brush, a three inch brush would be better, but that's all I've got at the minute. So I just get a reasonable amount on probably the third portion of the uh, brush. You want to do a little reservoir here first and then bring the paint up to the line. Spread the bristles out and just push firmly onto the wall and you get a nice clean line. So I'll do that again. Put your reservoir across first and then you can pick up some of that paint that you've put just below the ceiling line and cut it in nice and sharp. And it's going to be the same again, so just repeat the process. Put a line just below there. And then just pick up some of that paint. Keep a nice steady hand when you're doing it. If you 
miss a bit, you can always go back and pick it up like that. And then on to the next bit. And another technique you can do is you can hold your breath as you're going across as well. And that just shores everything up and keeps a steady line. Like so. Now another tip is if you don't want to be messing around taking radiators off the wall, what you want to do is get yourself what's called a radiator extension. And it just allows you to go down the back of the radiator without actually having to take the radiator off. Now this is very tight to the wall, it's difficult, but it does allow you to get down the back of the radiator and get the job done. Right then guys, quick update. I've cut in around the room. This wall I'm not sure about now. Um, I was going to have it as a feature wall with this crown mat. And the colour I was going to go for that I've selected is this malted mint. Um, but I'm not sure about it, so I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, lights back on, just because it's getting a bit darker now, so I can see a little bit better. Just grab the camera a sec. And I'll just pan this round so you can see the progress so far. And I'm just going to crack on and start rolling the walls now. I apologise if this bit's a little bit boring. I mean, we're literally watching paint dry here, but uh, it's just all part of the process. So I'm going to pull it in the video anyway. You know what, I'll bang on a tune for the next minute to entertain us while watching paint dry. <laughs> I hope I didn't blast out your eardrums too much of that raving music. Okay guys, it's the next day. Um, just to show you the progress, if we have a look around the room. The walls have come out pretty nicely. Else has been inspecting the progress. Um, and I've decided on this wall, I'm going to do it a soft grey instead of the malted mint. I think it'll look a lot better. So I'm just going to start cutting that in now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm up to. The great escape. She's jumped off roof. <laughs> right, so here I am just cutting in the feature wall with the soft grey colour now. So similar process as before, I cut it in with the brush, the angled brush that I'm using and then I just back roll it with the mini roller just to get a nice smooth finish. And don't be shy to use masking tape, it makes things a lot easier when cutting in. So just put the masking tape on and then you can whiz around with the brush cutting it in.
So here we are again watching paint dry. Um, I think I'll have a little bit of tranquility on this one rather than give myself a headache listening to that rave music again. So yeah, I'm just moving from left to right on the wall. Um, not rocket science really. Just have fun with it. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so now that the walls are painted, I'm just going to go around and mask off where the carpet is and we can do the skirting boards. And you just want to make sure when you're doing this, you tuck in the masking tape under the skirting board, like so. Okay, so once everything's masked off, I'm going to go round with my quick flow primer first, um, brush that in, and once that's on, I'll let that dry, and then I'll go round the skirting boards with this quick dry gloss, fast flow gloss. So that's the plan of action now. I'm just going to crack on with it. And you don't want to be putting too much gloss onto the skirting board because it will drip like you wouldn't believe. Um, certain brands are really bad for it to be fair. The one I'm using is not too bad. Okay, so I'm just going to give the radiator a lick of paint as well. Again, same process. I'm going to start off with the primer and then let that dry. And then I'll go over it with the uh, gloss afterwards. Okay, so now that I've got the primer down, I'm just whipping around the room with the gloss now. So I'm just going around glossing all the skirting boards. And once I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and do the radiator and the window ledges as well. So that's where I'm up to. Now another quick tip I want to share with you guys. If you want a nice straight line, what you can do is if you get some clear corking or silicone, run a small bead. Put your mask and tape on first, then run a small bead of clear silicone along the line and then just get your paint and paint it in. And then while the paint's still wet, take the mask and tape off and you'll get a nice finish. So I'll just demonstrate that now. And it just gives you a nice, really sharp line. And if I just bring you in a bit closer, you can see it'll give you a nice laser sharp line all the way up now. So that's just how I do it anyway. All right guys, so as I mentioned earlier on, if you are gonna continue painting the next day, um, you wanna keep your brushes and rollers in an airtight container. So you could use this Hamilton bag that the roller came out of and just keep it sealed. Um, a Pringles tin, these work well for keeping your rollers in as well and it'll keep it airtight. Uh, as I use a lot, uh, aluminium foil uh, works perfectly well as well. Now if you are done um, and you just need to clean your brushes and rollers out, I use this tool, it's like a seven in one tool and it just helps clean your rollers out. So you just take this out of the foil what I do is I just use the circular bit there 
hold the roller at an angle and then just comb down it and you can see all the paint that comes out. Just makes it easy to do. And then I'll just rinse it out now. So I'm going to get on with doing this and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay, time for the moment of truth. Actually really like how the room's turned out. So I've put a few paintings up on the wall. My nan's an artist. So I've got an old base painting of hers there. A forest with a stream running through it. And then one of Octorada High Street. It's like a watercolour. And then I've tried a bit of uh, home interior designs here. Been to B&M and got a few accessories for the room. And then I got these from Amazon, the lemon trees. I'll put a link in description actually for some of this stuff. Um, I like the colour, the warm cream coffee like colour. Complements the soft grey. So I'm really pleased with how it's turned out to be honest guys. Drop a comment, let us know what you think, whether you like it, whether you don't like it and why. Um, if you do like these type of videos, I've got a whole channel of DIY style videos to check out. Um, and that's going to be about it for this one. Thank you very much if you've watched all the way through the video to the end there. And uh, I'll catch you next time.